our family's about to find out what it's like to take a four-hour business class train from Penang, Malaysia to the nation's capital and largest city, Kuala Lumpur. We arrived here by train a few days ago, but that was a shorter trip from Ipoh on a simpler rail in coach seating. So we're hoping to experience a little bit more luxury as we wrap up our latest trip around Southeast Asia and start a five-flight journey home to Denver to celebrate Halloween. Let's get to it. We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise see only in textbooks and TV. Now, to get to the train station, we have to get to the ferry that's gonna take us there, but to get to the ferry, we need a cab. Well, here's our taxi. Unfortunately, we ordered it about an hour ago and it just got here, so we now only have about 15 minutes until the ferry would leave. We have no choice but to just take the taxi straight to the train station and take the ferry completely out of the equation, which honestly is a perfectly reasonable thing for us to do anyway. We just thought it would be kind of cool to have a little variety, do trains, planes, and automobiles. Because there are two different ways to get on Panang Island, and one is what we're gonna do now and take a cab because there's a bridge. The other is the ferry that goes directly from the Georgetown Ferry, which is the biggest city in Penang, to Butterworth where the train station is. It's probably gonna be about a one hour drive. It took us about an hour getting out here, but the traffic is extra bad today, so it may take longer. One hour and 35 minutes, he says. You may have noticed that there's a lot of media coverage around the increased popularity in travel insurance these days. Chalk it up to a post-pandemic return from those no questions asked refunds that were being offered by airlines, resorts, and travel companies during COVID. Now the responsibility is back on travelers when it comes to illnesses, injuries, flight delays and interruptions, and bad weather. After working with various insurers over the past few years, we partnered with Safety Wing because they offer the policies we really need and the customer experience we truly want. Not only does their travel insurance protect us against the transportation, the lodging, and the hurricanes that are out of our control. But their focus on medical coverage is exactly what we crave after all the health scares we've had with Colt throughout our trips. And their newer options are perfect for anyone who lives outside of the US, like the adventure sports add-on that covers cave diving, ATVs, and scuba, or the electronics theft add-on that's great when you're carrying high-end phones, tablets, laptops, or camera gear. Plus, they've streamlined their already fantastic response times. Connecting with a human still takes only seconds, but now even claims are turned around in seven to 10 business days. For as little as $45, you can get up to a quarter of a million in protection. In our experience, that's just smart travel. To see how much protection you can get for the lowest possible premium, go to followabc.com slash insurance or use the link in the description to run a quick quote right now. Man, that traffic. The ticket counter is level one, one level up. So we're gonna have to take the elevator because of all our bags. We're traveling with our suitcases. We're in full gear. The ferry station is actually attached to the train station. I guess they don't call it a ferry station, do they? Sounds magical. Port. A port. The ferry port. It's attached, so you can just walk from one transportation to the next. Ooh, KTM. That's what we're looking for. I'm gonna get a Red Bull because I really need a Red Bull, but they only have the non-carbonated. Sorry, baby. I actually want a coffee. I think we get some food on the train. We'll know for sure when we're there. But just in case. Once we scan our tickets to get into the train station, we can't come back the tickets won't be valid anymore. This is our one shot. All right, Brooklyn, you go first. If you're anything like me, you're wondering what a city is doing in Malaysia with a name like Butterworth. So I actually looked it up. Turns out, of course, it's named after a former British governor back in the days when this was part of the British Empire. Wouldn't make much sense otherwise. Not a very Malaysian sounding name. I really prefer the carbonated Red Bull. Something just makes it feel like it's been sitting out for a long time. We've probably seen the most durian in Malaysia. We actually tried it for the first time. The flavor of it, we still have yet to actually try the fruit. We're a little worried because it smells so bad and that's why it's not allowed certain places. Like you can't go into the subway with durian. You can't go into the train station with durian because it just smells like trash. Apparently it tastes better. I wasn't a fan of the flavor, but who knows? Do you like durian? Have you tried it? Now, if we were going the other direction from Kuala Lumpur to here, we would actually have a business class lounge that we could wait in. 
here. It's a much smaller operation. They don't have those kind of facilities. So we're pretty much standing here in non-air conditioned space along with about 300 of our closest friends. Speaking of our closest friends, we're actually hosting a meet and greet with our closest friends, the Mom Duty Channel in BGC Manila in early January. So we're gonna keep rolling out more information about that uh, as we get closer, but for now you can pre-register at abcmd.club. We'll see you there. We're gonna take the elevator again. And this one has a little bit of a line. Since we have a business class ticket, our car is the very first one. It's car A. Right? I wonder what kind of view we would get. Like, I always imagine these windows, but probably not. Probably the conductor might be up there. I didn't actually get to pick our seats, so they have us separated. Uh, row four and row 10. Kids want to sit together. And our suitcases are too big to fit up here, so I've got to find a place up front for them. I think the seats are made for shorter people than me because they can't get this to head height, but it is adjustable. It goes up and down. And let's talk about a few of the other things that are on here. We've got dual armrest things that are stowed. If I pull this one out, it looks like it's just a tray for food and such. Simple plastic. On the other side, ooh, this one's beefy. And this is the screen that you can use so that we can, it's got three different menus. First menu is for food and beverage, second one's for internet, and the third one is for food order history, which seems like it should really fall under food and beverage. I think you need two menus with one sub menu. But you can actually surf the internet from the interface here because you have a complete mobile, a browser on here. The seats are really comfortable. Uh, they're just this like microfiber, but you can lean them back. Let's see how far they go. It's pretty good, it's better than most airplane seats. There's a place here where you can hang up something that's on a hanger, a teeny tiny pocket in case you have a little bit of change that you need to store on the seat in front of you. And it looks like some charger cable ports right up here in the middle, yes, that's what those are for. It doesn't look like we have the US style plugs on those, so we would need an adapter. And the seats feel extra wide. There are only three when in the other cars, there's two on each side. So we're, we're getting a one by two configuration. But look, I found this little button right next to the, the button to make your seat go back. There is a little bell. And I think that is to call an attendant. And the AC is blasting, it's pretty comfortable. I bet you I'm gonna get cold pretty quick. So there are pros and cons to this strong AC. Uh, but then down here with your feet, you have a little foot rest. The windows are huge, so we're gonna have gorgeous views. It's gonna be over four hours of seeing Malaysia's west coast. And we're gonna go back through Ipo. We were just there a few days ago, so we've launched that episode already. You gotta check it out. We did splunking, cave exploration. It was exhausting, it was thrilling, and it was, it was an adventure of a lifetime. So check that one out. We're looking for the bathroom. I, I feel like there's gotta be one up here because the sign above our head has the little symbol for it. What's in here? Uh, I think it's just like the front of the train. Yeah, that's the front of the train. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna find it back here. We're gonna pass the coffee and tea station. Here we go, found it. I think it is fully, fully gross when people show you bathrooms, but it is a thing. You wanna know what you're getting into before you get on the train, but this is the bathroom. I think we have about one minute until our scheduled departure and right now this train or this car is only about half full. So I'll be curious to see if we end up leaving significantly later than what the scheduled time was or if that's just the way this car is going to be, in which case we could probably move the kids up a lot closer to us. Half full, that's very optimistic. I just heard the door close. We are on our way. We are exactly right on time. Yes, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry, it's all wrinkly. So the kids aren't able to move up because there are more people that are going to come on the train that have assigned seats as we go and get closer to Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, that makes sense actually. That checks out.
I don't think we're talking loudly, and I think that may be just a Japanese thing. With the sun shining through the window, it might be actually a little bit too bright, but that's okay because we've got the handy little shades that we can pull down here to block some of the sun. I want to see what this little monitor can do. First tab was food order. Let's see if we can place an order. Chicken lasagna actually sounds good. Everything else is sold out. They have nasi lemak. That is the national dish for Malaysia. Looks like they would have a lot more drink options like Coke and Sprite and 100 plus. Colt's gonna be bummed. They're all sold out except for an orange juice, water, and coffee. Phil hates coffee, so we're gonna get some water. I have to use my ticket reference ID uh, along with some other information. Gives you two options for payment, cash or online payment, but we're, we're gonna pay cash. I just pressed place order and then change screen, so let's hope it worked. Oh, food order record. Good to go. I'm, I don't know how long it's gonna take. I should get my cash ready now. Food was 13 ringgits, which is not even $3 USD. I have to write another article for insider.com, so I'm gonna to try to make some progress on that now while I have the chance. It's not quite big enough for my computer. Uh, okay, so actually I can't because I don't have internet. <laughs> it's a Google Doc. Hey babe, here comes the Kathy Cat. The Kathy Cat? The Kathy Cat. The Kathy Cat. I'm gonna skip the cloth gate so we have some water coming our way, but also it's noted that on our train out here, we had two different trains and none of them had any food or beverage service. So I don't know if this is this specific train or if it's just because we're in business class. But look, included is a cheese sandwich. So we got a cheese sandwich each, and then I don't know what's in here. Let's see. How cute are these? For the little machine if you wanna watch YouTube. Salted peanuts, thank you. <gasps> Mango. <laughs> Mango juice. I love mangoes. Well, this is a very pleasant surprise. Ah, thank you. And my order did come, and it's hot. Okay, the water. We had this nasi lemak when we were in Kuala Lumpur. We did a little food tour around the city. We'll see how this compares, but just to recap, is coconut rice, egg, peanuts, sardines, beans, with fried chicken and a shrimp paste. They're maybe a little too stale. Otherwise, it's kind of like a TV dinner. But it's nice to have a hot meal. I'd say instead of the sandwich, so thumbs up for a train. But the nasi lemak we had in Kuala Lumpur was delicious, way better. I found a good use for the hook in front of us it's to hold our trash. I think I'm gonna try this cheese sandwich. So it looks like it has one slice of cheese, some lettuce, and maybe some mayo. It is what it is. Let's try the peanuts though. Mm. Those are good. It's beautiful to watch everything go by. I think we're doing about top speed, which is 140 kilometers per hour. And for our American friends watching this, you'll have to Google that. It's actually a surprisingly quiet ride, and it's because they're electric. ETS stands for Electric Train Service, and that's the kind of track we're on. We've got a few hours to kill, and I don't need the internet, so I'm gonna get some editing done. We just stopped over in Epo, so this is the place we were a few days ago, and it marks about the halfway point for our trip today. There's more food. I wasn't expecting this. And it actually just got so cold. I'm freezing, so we're gonna use our travel blanket. Phil and I swear by these. We never travel without it. It's our gravel travel blanket, and we will leave a link in the description for you if you wanna check it out yourself. It's so much warmer. Okay, I have to admit, it's a little bit cold in here, so even I'm using mine. And Aaron's right, it was all of a sudden, so I feel like they just turned on the air conditioning, or maybe it's because the sun went down and now we're not getting the heat coming through the windows, I don't know. But one thing I like about the idea of this meal is it's warm. Not exactly sure what it is, but nasi, tomato, ayam. Looks like maybe some chicken in a tomato sauce, and then some vegetables, maybe in a chickpea sauce, and then some rice that's maybe brown rice. Definitely smells like good Malaysian food. It's good, but it's not that hot. So I see carrots and potatoes, I think, over here. Way better than the previous food. Oh my gosh. It is fully nighttime. For some reason, I wasn't expecting that. But I guess it makes sense because we are almost to Kuala Lumpur and we're supposed to arrive after 8 p.m. This day has flown by so fast. We 
you gotta put our blankets away. We just shove them right in here, get super small, put them in our backpacks. We left the kids in really good spirits at the beginning of this trip. We haven't talked to them since. Four hours is a very long time for them to keep the right attitude, especially when the sun is going down and it's getting late and they're starting to get tired. The wheels can really come off. So I'm gonna be very curious to see how they're doing back there when we get off the train in a few minutes. Before we arrive, I should probably tell you how much we paid for this experience. It was 32 USD, 147 ringgits. That's Malaysian currency. That's per person. So $32 per person for business class seats. Uh, you have your little monitor, you can order food, there's food included. I think it's a pretty good deal. So we actually thought we were at the next station, which is KL Central. That's where we went out of last time a few days ago. Uh, luckily, our little host in the car here knew a lot more than we did. And she walked up and she's like, aren't you guys Kuala Lumpur? We said, I think we're KL Central. And she said, eh, let me see your tickets. This wasn't the station I was expecting us to come in at, but it really doesn't matter. It's still really close to the city center. The hotel we're staying at is still only a couple miles away. You have to scan your ticket a second time to leave the train station. We gotta find a cab. I can't believe how dead it is here. You would think that it's 3 a.m. Place is really beat up, really torn up. Tiles missing everywhere. Looks abandoned. I can't believe we're actually using it. All right, we're gonna try to catch a grab. For those of you who don't know what a grab is, uh, it seems to be really big in Asia. It's like Uber or Lyft in the, in the US or the Americas. Uh, one thing I don't like about Grab too much is that they rarely come to where you are. They tell you the nearest pickup point and then you have to walk there, which is always kind of a pain when you've got a bunch of suitcases and kids in tow. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out, and it actually looks like they want us to be on the other side of the tracks. Lord knows how we're going to get there. It might take some doing, so let's see. So I actually don't think we have any ability to get back to the other side of the tracks because we can't get back into the station at this point. So we can't even walk back under. I don't know how else we would cross the tracks at this point. So I'm texting the driver to see if he can somehow pick us up over here. Hello, I don't know if you got my message, but we're on the other side of the train station and we don't have the ability to get to your side. Are you able to come over here? Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, that's one step closer. We just need a hotel for the night because early in the morning, we're taking a flight from here to Manila and we have a long layover. And then we're starting our flight from Manila to Guam, from Guam to Honolulu, Honolulu to LA, LA to Denver, woo! And then we'll be home for a short period of time. Ready, buddy? Here comes a car, is this it? I don't know if this is gonna fit. <laughs> We might be holding one of these in the back. Okay, we're all set. All right, we made it. The W Kuala Lumpur. I love W hotels. I've stayed at them all over the, I can't really say world until right now but all over the US, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, very stylish hotels. And what I love is that they're part of our Marriott collection. So we're trying to build up our Marriott loyalty status. Having a high-end option within that portfolio is really cool. So we just gotta get checked in and I can check in from my phone. I even use my phone as a key. So really we haven't talked to anybody. That is gonna do it for this episode and that is gonna do it for Malaysia. Tomorrow morning, we get up early. We start that marathon travel day all the way back to Denver. We are gonna be celebrating Halloween, one of my favorite holidays in the US. We're not planning to do any episodes around that one, but then we're gonna be going to a brand new continent for us, Africa, as we head down to South Africa for an incredible family safari before we make our way back out to the Philippines for the holidays. Gummy bear! Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. We want to hear from you. We're going to see you in the next episode. Good night. Look at Kids are playing video games. No? No? It's YouTube? Yeah. They're watching YouTube. I can't believe they're not watching our channel. After I finish this typical gamer live stream, I'm going to watch Mom Duty. So in... Wait.
in four hours. Sorry, five and a half hours. Uh, the train is only uh, a little more than four hours, so that's not gonna work. Oh, I broke it. We're just a couple of troublemakers. <laughs> we, should, we should have our own skit on Saturday Night Live. <laughs>